And now to introduce Tina. Uh, and she and I are going to talk about um, everything you need to know about um, the toolbox across multiple levels of interventions for epidemic management. Over to you, Tina. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. So we have 20 minutes. Let's do it in tandem. Um, and uh, we do have uh, quite a lot of slides, but uh, we you will receive all of these also on LMS. And um, feel free to also contact us with any questions. So um, uh, Liz and I prepared um, some practical um, some practical recommendations um, and an overview of, of, of interventions uh, that you can apply for managing uh, the infodemic uh, to really also, uh, and also the infodemic risk in, in communities. So by the end of this lecture, um, you will have a basic understanding of the practical interventions uh, that you can uh, undertake to address. And of course, uh, also um, uh, we will draw parallels uh, to how you can adapt the models that you've seen in, in um, the previous sessions of the training, like the journey to immunization or rapid community assessment, um, how you can actually use those models to examine the infodemic related challenges in, in, in the community of focus that you're focusing on. Um, uh, actually, um, what would uh, practicing the infodemic management look like uh, in a health authority if um, all of the processes were in place to, to enable full infodemic management. Um, one would look at uh, all these five steps. You, you saw this figure before in the social listening uh, lecture where- uh, I think uh, I'm still seeing the title slide or is that just me? Oh, really? Sorry. Can you see it now? Yes. Oh, I'm really sorry. Um, the laptop wasn't updating. Um, so you saw this figure before, you've seen this figure before. Um, the social listening is really an integrated analysis are really the first step uh, that enable gather the evidence and the insights in order to be able to then uh, essentially deliver high quality health information and programming, uh, but then also inform interventions and um, uh, promotion of resilience um, to infodemic, um, a promotion of healthy behaviors, uh, and also community engagement. And then, of course, um, we always need to think about how we then strengthen preparedness, planning, policy, and systems through the lessons learned and things that we've learned um, in um, uh, during our, our work um, and, and practice. Um, this is a very busy slide, but uh, uh, suffice it to say, uh, when we think about intervening uh, on the infodemic, just like, for example, with public health and social measures, um, we really need to think about um, uh, how to intervene at different levels because the infodemic is really complicated. Uh, the phenomenon is very complex because the information environment really permeates our interactions both within the information ecosystem, uh, information, uh, uh, there are certain behaviors, uh, information seeking behaviors, um, and how information affects us as individuals. And then of course, um, all of that affects also the ability of the health system uh, to not only communicate with the communities, but actually um, uh, health system may be affected even with uh, delayed and missed care costs and and uh, overburdened uh, healthcare services um, uh, due to people changing their behavior, uh, health behaviors uh, due to the to the uh, infodemic. So, what are some practical infodemic management actions that you could take uh, to support a health program? Uh, or preparedness and prevention in health emergencies. So uh, keep in mind that infodemic managers, uh, we basically have tools at our disposal to be able to partner up and support uh, any health program. Uh, in this case, we will be focusing on, on the immunization program, uh, but also we could be just as much working with colleagues and, and in preparedness and prevention of, of other health emergencies. So what would you need to do the first uh, when you um, uh, really, uh, as an infodemic manager, you come into a country, really do a, uh, an infodemic landscape analysis really quickly, uh, do a SWOT analysis, really looking at uh, to understand the program, the current staffing, the resources, the data available, and uh, also look at the gaps that potentially um, 
uh, that have been identified so that what are the actual questions and problems that the program manager that you're going to working you're working with what are they trying to solve uh, that the infodemic may be com contributing to and Liz is going to uh, show you uh, some of the things um, more practically later on so when um, when one thinks well what can you practically do you actually can um, uh, take actions or recommend actions at several levels. Uh, so at the national level, uh, first of all, you've heard this before in the social listening lecture, identify the information voids. Uh, because um, if you proactively identify where is the confusion, where people are lacking information, they're seeking it, but they're not finding it. This is the essential uh, uh, best buy intervention that you can do to um, uh, to invest in answering those questions and providing that type of information. So really, uh, the way that you can even understand the audience needs better is through user journeys. And, and you've seen that um, discussed as examples in the human centered design lecture. Second, what you can also do is improve the quality and the quantity of health information available. Um, so uh, it's really important that um, you really look at all of the different channels that the health authority is using, uh, how updated um, and uh, at what quality and clarity is the health information being provided for, for different audiences, etc. cetera. Um, uh, really prepare um, uh, the health system to be able to respond to most common questions. Um, and of course, one of the strategic things that you could do is you can govern all of that through really setting an editorial or content strategy uh, and in anticipation of, of, of the questions, concerns, and, and certain uh, and, and expected infodemic risks. Thirdly, what you could also do is really focus on tailoring the content uh, and different approaches to most vulnerable populations. You, uh, so here uh, in the infodemic management, um, in social listening and infodemic management and um, insights generation, uh, segmentation um, of the insights for a different identified vulnerable groups is really key. So um, as much as you can uh, inform your, your actions um, uh, with, uh, understanding of, of the needs, information needs um, for, for different uh, vulnerable groups who very often will have uh, a different uh, information need um, uh, in, uh, that, that you will need to fill. What you also will need to look at is um, be effective, uh, proactive, thinking about how you will link your online efforts to offline behaviors. Uh, right from the get-go, define the indicators that assess individual factors that are reasonably likely to be impacted by the infodemic uh, strategies. So uh, knowledge, awareness, perception, uh, but also uh, are, are the usual that we think about, but also, for example, people's ability to discern accurate from inaccurate health information or knowing where to find credible health information or even uh, thinking about um, a trust in health information. So be careful that you're not trying to change the, the overarching uh, case numbers for a particular outbreak. Uh, what you can link your actions to is people's more concrete health behaviors regarding knowledge, awareness, perceptions, et cetera. Uh, connect also to networks for implementing infodemic management strategies. Um, as an infodemic manager, you really need to think outside of the box in what partnerships you need to build, uh, even beyond the usual networks. Um, uh, and really uh, not only for collecting information, but also sharing that information back. At the health facility level, um, you can take three actions. One is really making uh, this high quality health information content more widely available in more formats. So um, really look at um, how you will effectively use uh, different spaces in the health facility in order to uh, disseminate the information most widely in many different formats, um, and not only to patients, but also to healthcare uh, workers. So visual job aids, et cetera, can be really helpful there as well. Um, you've heard uh, a whole lecture earlier on encouraging quality patient conversations. 
Um, uh, but uh, keep in mind that from the infodemic management perspective, these conversations can also be asynchronous, which means in the digital space, they do not need to be taking, uh, uh, taking place um, um, synchronously. So uh, at the same time, we're in a conversation between a, uh, a healthcare provider and a, and a patient. So this is the opportunity uh, for you to really think uh, creatively about how to use digital spaces and digital communities. Um, uh, you have here, for example, one of the tips, uh, uh, share a WhatsApp tip or helpline. Um, and that's uh, an example of a synchronous digital uh, engage, um, uh, sharing of information. And also, of course, train health workers uh, on addressing uh, patient questions, concerned and misinformation. Um, you heard about motivational interviewing um, uh, because um, that's one of the uh, evidence, uh, really proven um, evidence-based uh, methods to, to elicit effective vaccine conversations. Now at community level, um, you can coordinate how trusted messengers and institutions share health information. And you can really be proactive in equipping them with fresh content, not just with messages, but content. So um, this is where your added value as an infodemic manager comes in. You can provide social listening and infodemic insights early. Uh, and not just the insight, but also the recommendation strategies and content so that the, uh, so that um, uh, the trusted messengers can then address emerging narratives or misinformation much more quickly. Uh, the second thing that you could do at the community level is to identify health experts and professionals who can speak to community groups online and offline. You heard this several times during the trainings that healthcare workers are the most highly trusted source of health information for people um, uh, universally across the world. And um, these are definitely trusted messengers to, uh, to invest in and to build partnerships with. So um, as an infodemic managers, beyond the usual strategies that you uh, may be familiar with, think about also um, identifying digital native health workers. So uh, health workers who have grown up with the social media, with the digital environment, who are uh, using uh, the online media um, as part of their everyday life. They're very comfortable with it. They know how to uh, interact with it. Um, um, and they are the best resource to be trusted messengers, not just to their patients offline, but actually also as a healthcare provider uh, online. And uh, lastly, um, the third intervention uh, that you could do um, at community level is to create a rapid response plan with the health system and immunization stakeholders on what to do and how to communicate in a crisis. Be prepared. Um, uh, there's uh, really different types of infodemic risk that you can prepare for and what you would do in, in each particular situation. So Lisa, I would um, hand it over to you. So how do we operationalize infodemic management related data collections and uh, synthesis and then response of uh, 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 using the existing tools that we have actually talked about uh, during the training? Over to you. Right. So um, this, the, these are going to sound familiar to you, but we're essentially going to add an infodemic lens on top of some of the existing tools you've already been introduced to. Next slide. So remember the journey to immunization? Well, here's the infodemic version. So there are domains in the journey to immunization that can be impacted by the infodemic in every step of the journey. Wherever information is received, sought, exchanged, can be places along the journey where the infodemic may impact perceptions and behavior. Um, and so therefore, we can also query all aspects of the journey to understand um, how the infodemic might be impacting people on every step. So how do people talk about vaccines compare? How do they signal about vaccines online and offline before and after vaccination? What kind of vaccine related information seems to feel overwhelming to people? What kind of information are they seeking and not getting enough of? Um, what role does the media play in amplifying or channeling vaccine concerns or misinformation? What can be done to address this? How are health workers affected by the infodemic and how does it affect their relationship to their patients? And where is their silence? Where, which perspectives or reflections on each step of the journey are you missing? So if there's silence and you don't know enough about what's happening at one step, maybe the social listening approaches that you're using are not capturing those perspectives and you might need to consider um, uh, finding other data sources to reference. 
Next slide. So let's talk about um, HCD tip. So do you remember the BES model? So that's that um, blue box in the top right about where you have these buckets of thinking and feeling, social processes, motivation, and practical issues that impact vaccine uptake. So here are some questions you can um, think about for each of those buckets. So for thinking and feeling, what kind of exposure to the infodemic does this person have? Um, what are they seeing that might worry them? How, this might, how might they react to too much information, concerns, or misinformation online or offline? And then if you go to the next slide, for social processes, what are the relationships networks that this person is part of, especially online? What kind of attitudes or norms are perpetuated online that this person is exposed to? What sources of information do they trust? What online spaces do they trust? How does this person interact with health voices online? When you're thinking about motivation, what are this person's needs and wants and how are they expressed online? And um, what would they be exposed to online that would motivate or demotivate them from seeking vaccines? Um, and so these are some of the things you can think about. And for practical issues, um, this is actually, I think, um, under um, underutilized when it comes to social listing. So thinking about what complaints or feedback does this person have about health service delivery, especially online? So think about like ratings and reviews websites, for example, uh, that people are leaving into health service social media or geolocation pages. What frustrations does this person voice about access barriers to services? And what tech or digital barriers may affect this person's ability to get health information or to get vaccinated. So these are some of the common questions you can ask. And these are actually built on top of the section for the HCD tip tool that's around building a persona. And now we'll switch gears again and we'll talk about the rapid community assessment. Now the RCA, um, can also include infodemic components. In fact, we actually made a specific version just focused on social listening and young people in digital contexts. Um, and uh, what we did is we actually did a rapid community assessment in San Mateo County, California, where it wasn't just CDC investigators investigating. We had 16 teenagers co-investigating with us because we wanted to understand what are the questions, concerns, and circulating narratives and misinformation that teenagers are seeing online uh, as we were getting ready for adolescent vaccine injection for COVID-19 vaccines. And the reason why we wanted to talk to teenagers about this is because the world their parents inhabit online is very, very different than from their teenagers. And so unless we actually talk to teenagers about that world that they live in, we're never going to fully understand that online world. And so we actually have a special addendum um, that's specific to adolescents and digital spaces that you can reference, um, and that there are additional um, analytic and data collection methods that you can use, such as online observations um, uh, that are helpful because public health practitioners might not have direct access to these online spaces. So how might you work with uh, key informants such as teenagers talking about their own online experiences if you yourself don't have access to those spaces. Next slide. We have tons of resources um, that are linked here. Uh, I highly recommend the, these readings and videos um, and particularly if you subscribe to just one newsletter out of your entire time in this particular training, you should subscribe to the uh, Infodemic Management News Flash. It's excellent and it really gives you an up-to-date list of the latest and greatest infodemic news resources, peer review journal, articles, publications, opportunities for fellowships and jobs, anything you can think of, it's there. Um, and Sergio did a really great job actually talking about how the African Infodemic Response Alliance has also been responding to the infodemic using some of these similar approaches. So we're hoping this is a little bit inspirational and there's even more, there's like, over 99 slides to this entire slide deck. So we just gave you like the tip of the iceberg here. There's a lot more. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask myself or Tina. 